Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will solve some problems about logarithms, which uh, uh, have been explained in the previous couple of lectures. We are talking about definition of logarithms, main properties, uh, graphs, etc. So, um, this lecture and maybe one or two others we will devote to solving problems with logarithms. Uh, which is extremely important to basically understand the concept uh, much better. Uh, this lecture will be about very simple problems, which are very, very basic. They are uh, based on the definition of the logarithms. So, um, allow me to basically spend some time on this because I believe it's very important to really feel how the whole thing with logarithms uh, is working before we go to anything more complex. So, simple problems. Okay, I have a set of problems which are formulated as follows. Given uh, the following equality, What's necessary is to rewrite this equality in exponential form. So basically, we have to think about what logarithm actually means. What's the definition of the logarithm? Okay, the logarithm of 9 um, with the base 3 is uh, the power we have to raise 3, the base, to get 9. Now, obviously, this is 2, because 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 9. So basically, these two forms are equivalent to one another. And to convert one into another, you really have to understand what logarithm is about. So again, since this is a power which 3 is supposed to be raised to get 9, and obviously 3 to the second uh, power 2 is 9, so this, that's why it's equal to 2. Similarly, logarithm of 8 base 1, 2. One, one sec uh, second. Now, this is minus 3. Why? Again, let's think about the definition of the logarithm. It's supposed to be the power I have to raise the base, which is 1, one, uh, one half, to get 8. Okay, is it true to the power of minus 3? Will it give me 8? Well, obviously it is true, because minus means we have to reverse uh, um, the one, 1 half into 2, and 2 to the power of 3 would be 8. So, this is an equivalent to this. Let's go further. Log base one tenth of one thousandth is equal to three. Again, if I will raise the base, which is one tenth, to the power of three, I will get one tenth times one tenth times one tenth is one thousandth. So this is justification for this. That's why this can be rewritten as exponential form. These two are completely equivalent. Next. Okay, let me wipe out this. So I will preserve the large format. I have three more of the same type. These are illustrative problems just to show what the definition of the logarithm actually is. Log base 1, no, sorry, base 2. Of 1, 10, 24 equals minus 10. Well, what does it mean? It means 2 to the power of 
minus 10 should be equal to uh, 1024, right? 1, no, sorry, again, it's 2, not 1. Okay. To the power minus 10 equals 2. Now, what is 2 to the power minus 10? Minus means 2 should be inverted into 1 half, and then 10 times multiplied by, by itself, well, you can verify it is 10.24. Well, I was working with computers for a very long time, and in computers, powers of 2 are very important for some reason. So I just remember that powers of 2 I remember up to probably 12 or even more. So, um, these are completely equivalent. This means that 2 to the power minus 10 is equal to 1024. And this means exactly the same thing. Uh, oh, wait. A little bit more uh, strange looking. Log based square root of 3 of 1 third. What is this? minus 2. Well, let's think about it. If I will have minus 3 to the power, uh, square root of 3, sorry, to the power of minus 2, what does it mean? Well, minus means I have to invert it. It would be 1 over uh, square root of 3. And then square, well, square root of uh, 3 square would, would be 3, so it would be 1 third, which is exactly this. So, again, this means that square root of 3 to the power of minus 2 is equal to 1 third. And this means exactly the same thing. And the last one in this series, log 3 of 1 over square root of 3 is equal to minus 1 half. Well, let's do this. 3 to the power minus 1 half. What is it? Well, 3 to the power of minus 1, let's say it would be 1 third, and then 1 half means square root. So it will be square root of 1 third, which is 1 over square root of 3. So these two forms, these two forms, these two are completely equivalent to each other. They are actually a definition of the logarithm. I didn't calculate anything. I, just re I, I have just rewritten 1 into a different format. Mean, me, meaning of these two things is exactly the same. This means that the 2 to the power of minus 10 is equal to 1024. This means exactly the same thing. 2 to the power of minus 10 equals to 1 over 1024. The same meaning, different notation. No more than this. What actually I wanted to emphasize is that logarithms are just a different notation for exponential function. Nothing more than that. All right, so this series of problems we have finished. Next one is actually very similar, but in reverse. OK, now we have to rewrite in the logarithmic form something which is given as exponential. So, if I know that 10 cubed is equal to 1,000, how, how, how can I rewrite this exponential expression in logarithmic form? OK, let's just think about it. I know that 10 to the power of 3 is equal to 1,000, right? Now, that means that if I will get logarithm base 10 of 1,000, I should get 3. That's what it means. This is a definition of the exponential expression, basically, notation of the exponential expression. This is exactly the same expression written differently, written using the logarithm. The meaning of this notation means exactly the same as the meaning of this notation. Again, 10 to the power 1 half is equal to square root of 10. Or, alternatively, we can say that log base 10 of square root of 10 is equal to 1 half, which means 10 to the power of 1 half is equal to square root of 10. 2 
to the third degree is equal to 8, means same thing as log base 2 of 8 is 3. Log base, so the base here becomes the base here. The result of this uh, raising to the power is supposed to be under the logarithms, and the exponential part itself becomes the value of this logarithm. 8 to the power of 1 third is equal to 2, which means log base 8 of 2 is equal to 1 third. 1 third is actually a, cubical, a cubic root, so cubic root of 8 is 2, obviously. Uh, One half to the power of minus three is equal to eight. It's exactly the same as log base one half of eight is equal to minus three. Both are correct. Indeed, minus means we have to invert one half into two, basically, and then cube would be eight. Same thing there. And the last one in this series four to the power minus one half equals to one half. Well, is it correct, by the way? 4 minus means it's 1 fourth. 1 half means square root. Square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. Exactly. So, in the logarithmic notation, it means log base 4 of this equals whatever the exponential thing is. Okay, that's the last one in this series. So we have converted logarithmic expression into exponential and exponential into logarithmic. In both cases, my most important point is that these are exactly uh, equivalent to each other, just different notation of the same thing. Now, let's assume that all logarithms below are base one half. So, what's the logarithm of one half? Well, here's an interesting consideration. When you have an exponential function, let's say 2 to the fourth is equal to 16, you can just calculate, if you don't know this value, you can calculate it. Well, you multiply 2 by 2 by 2 by 2, you will get 16. This is the calculable thing. What if I will say an equivalent thing? What is log 16 2? Well, here you have to make a little guess, basically. Well, which power should I use to raise the 2 to get 16? Well, you just think about, well, 2 power of 2 would be too small, because 2 squared would be only 4. 3 also too small. 2 to the third power is 8. Finally, 4, okay, 2 to the fourth power, yes, this is 16. So you are kind of guessing the, uh, the, the answer to this problem. You cannot directly calculate it using whatever your... Uh, I, I'm not talking about calculators. I'm talking about just using your mind. So you really have to kind of guess that this is 4. You have to try and fail and try and fail and finally you get the result. Now, this is a very important difference between logarithms and exponential functions. Exponential functions in simple cases. I'm not talking about exponential functions of a complicated case like this. No, 
I'm talking about integers, basically, which are relatively uh, easy to calculate. Integers and inverse two integers things. Um, now, this is something which you really have to, well, think a little, a bit, just a little. Now, which power should I use one half, uh, to raise one half to, to get one half? Well, obviously, in this case, it's an easy answer. It's one. Indeed, one half, let's just make, you know, it's, it's checking, basically. To the first power means it's just by itself, so it's one half. So this is correct thing. Since this is correct, and this is equivalent to this, then this is correct. Next. Power. Which power should I use uh, for one half to get one? Well, again, this is an easy thing because I know that any number raised to the power of zero, by definition actually, the power of zero is one, right? So I know that one half to the power of zero is equal to one. So that's why this is equal to zero. This power, which I have to use one half to this power, get, get me one. Next. Log one half of two equals. All right. Now, just a little bit more complicated. What power should they use for one half to get two? Well, again, it's kind of easy for me since this is uh, less than zero and this is greater than zero. It means I have to invert it, so my power should be negative. And considering I'm basically talking about easy. Uh, problems, it should be negative and integer. Well, my first try and very successful one would be minus one. Well, indeed, if you will do this, what does it mean? Raise one half into the power of minus one. It's basically an inversion. From one half, I'll get two. Exactly what I have to have here. So one half in, uh, uh, raised to the power uh, of minus one gives you two. This is exactly the same thing. That's why this is a correct answer. Okay, next. Load base one half, as usually, of one eighth. Well, let's think about it. What power should I use to raise one half into to get one eighth? Well, the power of one gives me one half, the power of two gives me one half times one half, so it's one quarter. And finally, the power of three gives me one half times one half times one half, and that would be one eighth actually. So it should be three. And this is the verification. One half to the power of three is equal to one one eighth. Oh, I'm sorry, one eighth. Okay. Next, log base one half of eight. Well, let's think about it. if using the power of three I get one eighth, then using the power of minus three I should get an inverse of one eighth, right? And indeed, one half minus three is equal to minus means it should be inverted. So one half becomes two, power of three, two times two times two would be eight. So one half raised to the power of minus three gives me eight. Now again, let me emphasize I guessed it. Well, I mean in this case maybe not my first guess, but one of the first guesses guess guesses, uh, was actually a successful guess. Uh, obviously, this would not work for something more complicated. But for these little exercises, that's exactly what's necessary to do. You have to just approximate what might be the answer, positive or negative versus 
uh, what exactly the relationship between these two base and and uh, and expression under logarithm. If they are less than one and greater than one, then the power should be uh, negative. If they are the same, both less than one or both greater than one, then the power should be positive. This should be positive. Finally, the last one in this series, log one half of one sixty fourth. Uh, six, right? Because one half the sixth degree would be one sixty fourth. Because it's two times two times two times two times two times two. It's two times six times by itself in the denominator, and that's one sixty fourth. Okay, that's the last one in this series. Um, just takes a little guessing, as, as you saw. With logarithms, as I was saying, you have to do a little guessing in, in, in these simple cases. You cannot directly calculate, like if you have uh, some integer uh, exponent, and you can basically multiply things directly. And now I have the last series of the problems, which is exactly the same as the previous one, but now the base is 25. So, base is 25 of 1 fifth. Okay. As I was saying before, this thing is greater than 1, this thing is less than 1, so most likely, I mean, Definitely, no, not most likely. Definitely, our um, exponent, the power we have to raise 25 to, should be negative. So 125 uh, becomes 125. Now, how to get from 125 to 15? Well, you have to really extract the square root, right? Square root of 25, which is the power of one half. So my guess is it's minus one half. Let's just think about it. 125. If you will raise it into one minus one half, what does it mean? First, you have to invert it because it's minus, so it's one twenty-fifth, and one half means square root. Square root of one twenty-fifth is one fifth. Exactly what we have to get here. So twenty-five raised to the power of minus one half is one fifth. That's why this is the correct answer. Next, log uh, base twenty-five of six twenty-five. Well. This is obviously 2, because 25 squared is 625. All right. Log base 25 of 5. Well, obviously this is 1 half, because 25 half, which is square root of 25, is 5. Next, log 25 of 1 25th. Well, what can I, what power should I use to convert 25 um, into 1 25th? Obviously minus 1. Because 25 in the power of minus 1 is 1 25th. Right? Two more. Two more. As you see, these are all simple problems, and they are basically are nothing but repetition of the definition of the logarithms. So if you know the definition of the logarithm, that this is the power you have to use to raise the base to get the expression under the logarithm. If you know this, every, uh, every one of these problems is trivial. Okay, I have two more. Log 25 of 1, 6, 25. Okay, you remember that uh, log of 6, 25 was 2, because 25 to the power of 2 was 6, 25. If I want once 1 over 6, uh, 25, it should be minus 2, right? Because we have to invert. And indeed, 25 to the power of minus 2 is 1 over 1 25th square, which is 1 over 625. 
And the last one, which I'm sure everybody considers as an easy thing, the logarithm of 1, base 25, or base 1 half, or base anything, would always be 0, because any base to the base to, to the power of 0 will give 1. So this was the last problem. And uh, again, the whole lecture is short and simple, and its only purpose is to basically inculcate into your minds the definition of the logarithm. It's just a different notation for exponent. If you know this, you know that. Nothing new about this. With calculations of the value of the logarithm, here situation is slightly different because in simple cases, uh, calculation of the exponent is actually simple. Calculation of logarithms involves certain guessing. Um, but that's only in simple cases. Um, uh, in, in practice, doesn't really matter because people don't re really do anything uh, right now outside of the computers. Um, but in these simple cases when integers are involved, you really have to understand that the guessing is really fine in this particular case. All right. Um, so um, uh, I, I do encourage you to, to use unizor.com as a... As, as a complete course, actually, which introduces you to different aspects of mathematics. And uh, it would really help uh, development of your um, analytical thinking, your creativity, etc. So do consider registering under certain supervision, um, get enrollment in some course, like algebra or geometry or whatever, uh, because then you will be presented with an opportunity to, to go through exams. Uh, exams are important. Here I am explaining this, and uh, it's, it's kind of easy for you uh, to follow, but if you have to really do the exam yourself, it really trains your mind relatively well. Thank you very much.